I look disgusting. Just kidding, I actually don't look that bad. It actually is okay. So it's my last day in Newport, Rhode Island. I'm probably gonna upload this on Monday because at that point I'll already be gone. So I'll be like safely able to talk about where I was. Um, Newport, Rhode Island has been great. A lot of people were confused as to why I came here by myself. First of all, I like traveling by myself. I love being alone. It just allows me to really just be with myself and my thoughts and you know, sometimes the internal monologue that I have is much more interesting than any conversation I could have with anybody. <laughs> so I've just basically been in a constant conversation with myself all week. Um, honestly, this week has been better than therapy. And I really got a chance to go back to points in my life and rehash some thoughts and memories and experiences and really come to terms with them. I am a bottler. I bottle, bottle, bottle everything because I'm a person who values money and productivity and like success over anything. So sometimes I'll find that like feelings and emotions are a burden on me because they prevent me from being productive so I suppress my feelings and emotions in order to become the like highest functioning person I can be but it takes its toll um, after years of suppressing things and bottling things I realized that it was actually impeding on my growth as a person and I've like, I don't know, I guess maybe become a little bit heartless and dead inside. <laughs> I love that I'm just like casually discussing this. Um, so anyway, I completely missed the big giant point that I wanted to make was that I came here to finish my second book. And I've been saying for the past freaking three years that I was going to finish this damn book. It always, you know, was like a work in progress. I never had the intention of finishing it really, really quickly. My first book did come about very quickly, and I think that as a result of that, my first book was not exactly what I wanted it to be. I thought it was good. My first book was cute. I will link my book below. You can buy a hard copy, or you can buy it for Kindle or just like an e-reader. So if you want to read my first book, it's a short read. It's a quick read. It's like a chicken nugget. It's really, you know, not my best work, I don't think. But a lot of people liked the book and thought it was good. And it does go through some of like ex some of the experiences that shaped me in my young life. Um, but this second book is a lot more intense, a lot more in depth. I clear up a lot more stuff that has happened to me. In the first book, I was still like trying to portray myself as very innocent and pure. And I did lie about something in my first book and that was my past as a stripper. I was not ready at that point to really let that information be out there because I was worried about judgment from my family and from my mother specifically. So I, I, I missed the opportunity in my first book to really talk about what it was like to be a stripper. And so the second book, I talk a lot about that, a lot about what happened to me during my time working as a stripper. One particular event that like left me traumatized to, till today. I'm traumatized from what happened. Um, and I never, ever spoke of it, um, but I wrote it few nights ago and it was definitely um, interesting. Um, another thing that I talk about are just some of my dating sexual relationships that I had in New York City that really shaped my views on sex now and like are also a part of the reason why I've been celibate for two years. And the last thing that I write about in my book, and this is something that has over and over and over again been asked by people that watch my channel, that follow my social media, is like what happened with my ex-boyfriend from like two, two and a half years ago. He was a 
really prominent person on my YouTube channel for about a year. He was in al almost every single vlog I did. And I've since privated and unlisted any video that he was in, which is a shame because it was a lot of videos, a lot of hours spent editing and filming. So it's like, it, uh, like that taught me never, ever, ever put your significant other, especially your problematic significant other on your social media, especially if it's part of your income and your job. Um, but our breakup was, was very difficult. And I think some people caught on to that because I was a person who discussed everything, who overshared everything about her life on social media. And this was the one time where I never explained what really happened because what happened was so fucked up and so bad that, and I was afraid like I, I literally like never in my life felt so much like who the fuck was I dating? Honestly, for like an entire year, I like was shaken because after a year of being with this person, I was like, I had no idea who this person was the entire time. And so this was the Australian that I dated before I did before the 90 days. A lot of people were like trying to expose me, saying that like, oh, she tried to be on 90 Day Fiance with with another Australian. Like, it's not her first time in Australia. She's traveled to Australia before. And I like tried to suppress and ease those rumors by at least acknowledging it that like, yes, it's true. Like I did date an Australian and I was in a long-term relationship with an Australian before Erica and like But I couldn't really go into detail with what happened because I was afraid Because this person was like constantly holding information that they said they had on me over my head and like it took me a while to realize like they can do whatever they want like they can't really hurt me and you know I definitely have the ability to hurt them but I won't and I've extended that grace and kindness to them for like a really long time so like I wanted to share with you guys finally what happened um, and <sighs> It's been difficult to go back to what happened between me and this person. I have tried my best to forget it for the past two years. For two years, I have literally taken the image, the memory of this person, and I've locked it, double, triple, quadruple locked it into like a vault and I have avoided the very thought and memory of this person because this person elicits such a physical response out of me and I hate to even say that because that, that means that he affects me but it literally gets to a point where like if he ever messaged me or like tried to reach out to me my body would start to like uncontrollably shake I remember there was like one time, it was shortly after we broke up, that he tried to reach out to me. And I just remember the entire time we were on the phone, my body was uncontrollably shaking. Like it was, I don't even know what it is. I did not know what it was at the time, but I Googled it afterwards and apparently it was like my body's like adrenaline was like going crazy. Um, this person does not hurt me anymore um the whole situation has been over for a really long time and i'm not one to dwell on the past i'm not one to dwell on the past and not want to forgive and not want to forget i have forgiven and i've tried to forget but that relationship really affected me because it came into my life at a really really vulnerable time when i was at my sickest and this person was with me during my relapse and during a lot of really uncertain moments in my life when i did not know if i was going to be alive three months from then and so that you know created a lot of closeness between us and if i'm gonna be completely honest like all things aside I, I like really deeply, deeply, deeply cared for this person so much, like more, more than I've ever cared about anyone else before. I would have literally done anything for this person. And it, it's also so strange because as horrible as things got towards the end, 
like the I never in my life have had a connection with somebody like that and it wasn't a sexual connection and that's the weirdest thing because you know I've had tumultuous relationships in my past where it was like we can't keep each other's hands off of each other we're like you know we're just so physically in sync with each other me and this person had really not a lot of physicality between us but we had like an an intellectual emotional bond with each other and we like we were basically the I don't know but <laughs> it's, so, it's so hard to say um I just really loved his personality and our sense of humor was the same we liked a lot of the same things we had a lot in common I thought like you know for a period of time he was my best friend so it was pretty crazy that we went from being that close and going through all this stuff together and moving to Europe together to then being like literally mortal enemies can't stand the sound of your name like you are the person that brings me like nightmares at night and gives me the most anxiety <laughs> like so finally in this book that I've been writing that I'm finishing this week I am like on the last two chapters um, I'm gonna discuss the relationship and what really happened uh, you know of course certain things have to be left out for legal reasons but you know I'm gonna do my best to talk about almost everything that happened and be honest with you guys and a lot of people have also asked me well are you gonna talk about the other Australian <laughs> and I um, obviously I'm still bound by contract with TLC so I can't really discuss anything in relation to 90 day fiance but I do have things I want to say that are not in relation to filming or the show that are in relation to the way that I behaved and the way that I brought about this idea of going on the show with Erica and I really want to talk about that in the book. Um, I, I, trust me guys, this book is not going to be like my redemption of like me coming out and like being like, look guys, I'm this amazing person. No. I am severely flawed. I have been a fucking piece of shit in my life. I have been an asshole. I have lied. I have been deceitful. I have been not a good person in my life. And it is the most freeing and amazing feeling to be able to acknowledge that and not have to lie to myself or like live in like a false reality where I am the fucking bright shining protagonist. And that that's been part of my journey is like understanding that I'm not always right and as much as and as highly as I want to think of myself I'm not always the best fucking person you know like I'm so highly flawed I make so many mistakes like I deal with mental illness I deal with a lot just like everybody else does and I'm like at a at an age and point in my life where like I just want to be fucking real with myself and you guys so I'm drinking this weird pink drink I got from Dunkin Donuts Okay, I'm gonna go take a walk on the beach. This is like my morning afternoon routine. Every single morning that I've been waking up here in Newport, I have been having my coffee, eating something for breakfast. I've had avocado toast the past two days. And then, and then doing like a nice walk on the beach. And then I go back to the hotel. I write for like three, four hours. Then I have dinner. No, then I work on OnlyFans stuff. Then I work on my social media stuff. And then I go get dinner and I write until I fall asleep. And that's been my routine pretty much here. And it's been amazing. It's been really great. And I've really gotten a chance to get a lot of great work done. And a lot of people also have been asking like, why did you need to leave your house to go and write? I just needed to get out of my house, out of like my comfort zone, and I needed to put pressure on myself. If I was by myself and I was paying for a hotel that was far away from my house, that I that I wouldn't just physically be able to sit there and make excuses not to write like I have been for the past three years. I, I knew that like I'm here for this purpose and if I don't do it, I have failed. So that is why I did it. This is why I came here. Also, it just allowed me to only focus on this one particular task and also to 
kind of self-indulge because I feel like writing a memoir is a little self-indulgent like you're like always in your head like thinking about everything and like I've been going for like walks and like listening to music that I used to listen to during certain moments in my life to like elicit some memories I've been watching old YouTube videos like I have literally been living in the past for the past week and I'm I actually kind of lost my mind a little bit for a while like I le legit lost my fucking mind it felt like the shining and I was I always watch the shining and I'm like what the fuck like what's going on with that man now I understand what went on with that man because it almost happened to me <laughs> so anyway okay I'm gonna go for my walk thank you guys for listening to my little chat I hope you're having a great day I'm so excited for you guys to be able to get my second book and I am so excited to be able to share my second book with you hopefully it'll be it'll probably be out in the month of March or April so be on the lookout for that but in the meantime I will link my first book down below so you guys can get caught up and you know kind of get like a little taste of what's to come because some of the characters in my first book do end up making appearances again in the second book one of them in particular try to fuck me in the first book actually fucked me in the second one i hope he's proud of himself but anyway okay i'm gonna go thank you guys again i'll talk to you later bye